Hello, fellow alchemists. Welcome back to a new little mini series I'd like to do. Um, recently, I had a very big project which required me to actually read in some XML files and then write out um, some HTML pages, uh, actually PHP pages. And I thought that this would be a really great uh, series to kind of bring to people because some people actually are replacing, you know, quote unquote, legacy systems. And of course, XML is probably the format for these type of legacy type systems, especially big ERP like systems that you know you have to integrate with. And um, I know that you know parsing JSON is quite uh, standard and used a lot, but not a lot of people talk about how to properly parse XML. And I've gone through basically three different stages, and we will go through those stages ourselves. So the first one is uh, using basically XPath and a library called Sweet XML to do the parsing. So what I have over here is the test document. I just made it up on the spot. Uh, we have, uh, of course, the beginning XML part. We have a people tag, and within the people tag is two person tags. And so I'm going to define a struct, which will basically work. Uh, you know, I should expect a person named Bob and his age, which should come as an integer to be there. And uh, basically, we're going to start from scratch. So this is a brand new project, as you can see over here. Um, this kind of test is a little bit useless, so I'm just going to throw this one away. And I just want you to see that I put a support folder in here, and that's where my test data will go. And now the next part is I want to actually start to build up my um, parsing. And uh, the first thing is that I'm going to create a basically a file over here. So I'm just going to call it people.ex. So XML parse.people. And now within here, this is basically my context uh, that I'm going to be using. And within people, I need to make actually a people folder and also a person struct. So person.ex and so this is going to be xml parse people person of course I need to actually define my struct and so I have a name and page and what I like to start doing recently is actually start to define kind of what that is so I start to actually define a type, and it's called T. And of course, that will be our module. And finally, the name, of course, will be a type of string. And the age will be an integer. So this is basically my type spec. And so now within over here, uh, I want to actually start to define you know, something. Um, so basically, I want to have a function called uh, parse. This is a sweet XML parse. And we've taken our XML data as a string. And I'm also going to write a little type spec for what I'm going to expect over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take in the content fully as a string. And I want to actually return a list of I'm going to alias in, small parse, person. So it's going to be a type of person. And now, finally, we're going to get out, get down into the, the dirtiness. So we need to actually pull in our XML library. And that one, of course, will be sweet XML, basically our own version 0.6.6. .6. And so I need to pull that in and now we can start getting down to the dirtiness so of course we always want to start with a test 
And so I need to create my test and we're gonna test at the context level. And so over here, uh, we need to do uh, people test.exs, that module, uh, XML parse, people test. And this one should be use X unit case. And of course we can be asynchronous. Finally, we can use sweet XML to parse out people. And so what I'm expecting is basically we have Bob and Jane in that order. So I'm still going to, oh, sorry, not in here in my test. I'm going to expect that we have a list with, I can also alias that, parse people dot person. So we'll have a person struct, name is Bob, age is 20. And then we're gonna have another person struct. Name is, I believe, Jane, age is 18. And I'm going to expect that if we use, uh, I'm going to use this people. And parse this out, people, that sweet XML parse. And now we need to actually read in that. So the way I like to read in data is actually quite, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can just, basically you think that you're running this from the top level. So the test directory, and then finally the support directory, and then finally the name, which is test.xml. There is a nice uh, function called path.join, which will take these different ones and actually join them into a string with the slashes for you. And then finally we do a file.read, and this will return okay with the XML data. And then from there, we just take that XML data and that should just work. So now when I go to run these tests, we have a failure and it's pretty simple. That's because we're not actually doing anything yet. And so now here comes the actual action part of this. Um, so, What's really cool about SweetXML, uh, I love SweetXML, and initially I was using it in my project, but uh, I'll show you guys a little bit later some benchmarks on why I don't use SweetXML, but just to kind of show you how easy it is. Uh, you can use XPath to do all the parsing, which is really, really nice. Um, and they have this wonderful sigil, and you need to just import that sigil. And the way to do that is that you use import SweetXML, and I only want to import the sigil X. And it's an arity of two. Now this sigil will let you to actually write uh, XPath uh, in a very, very easy way. Um, so what you do now is that you say sweet XML dot, and then there's this function called XMap. And that one takes the string and then finally, you give it some keyword lists. So you can say, okay, um, I'm gonna have a list of people. And that will be um, at the, sorry, I'm checking up. So yeah, so we have a list of people. And now within there, I need to grab the two attributes, right? And so my list of people, well, not just that, but we also need the beginning part. So how to find all the different people. And this is where the sigil comes in, this X sigil. We just use this uh, tilde over here. And then I like to use the string like this. It's also fine. And so we need to look for person. So we need to just find all the person. And within there, we need to actually grab their name, which is, and then this is, you, you can start to use uh, some relativity, which will just be a dot. So 
starting from person, we then look for the name. And of course, this is also another sigil. And we need to grab that name's text. So that's just the, the text between the tags. And then finally, we need to grab the age, which again, this is the, the sigil. And for the sigil, we need to actually grab all of the uh, age. So that is actually dot slash again, because inside of person, we have name and then we have age. So inside of our person, we have a name and age, and these are both siblings. So that's why they're both dot slashes. Uh, the slash slash means anywhere within here. So anything, anywhere within this document. And so we will grab that, sorry, we'll grab that from here. And so again, we need to grab the text, which is inside of that tag. And now the last thing is that because we're grabbing multiple people, we need to actually add a little modifier at the end, for L, which should mean it's a list of persons. And inside that list should be some maps that grab a name at name, and of course the age. So then we should be expecting that we have people coming back. And if we actually map through those people, then we can we'll have a name with a name and then we'll have age with an age and then we can go ahead and actually just create that person of course the name will be name and the age will we have to actually translate that because it's always going to be string you know it's text right so it should be introduced to parse and we pass in the age. Now, I don't really remember if this one should be a parse or what, so we're just gonna look that up. So I've been using a lot of Rust recently. So in Elixir, if we do the integer parsing, uh, see there's a two string and that will just give us a string, but we want to go from integer to, to a two string. So we want to go from string to integer. So it looks like there's nothing in here, but I believe string has something. So there should be, there's two of them, I believe. One is a parse. Let's see, there's a two integer. That one will return an integer. And it will throw an exception if it's not parsed correctly. But that should be fine because we, we know it should be parsed fine. So uh, if we say string, to integer, then that should work just fine. So now if we run our test, and looks like that didn't quite work properly. Let's see, argument error to integer. Ah, so this is good. This is a, a good thing to show. So one thing I wanna talk about, which is another a little bit annoying thing about SweetXML, is it's actually built on top of another library. Um, that library is called Wow, I can't remember the name. Oh, XM Earl, or it's like this. It's uh, built on top of this library called XM Earl. And if you guys remember, uh, I talked about this in a while back that uh, Erlang uses uh, character lists as their strings, uh, but Elixir uses a binary type underneath for their strings using UTF-8. And so this is actually expecting a binary, but as you can see, when you see double quotes, or sorry, when you see single quotes, it's actually a character list. So we actually had to convert those into uh, strings. And I believe there's a function called toString, which is built into kernel. So this will actually translate the character list into an actual string, so then these will be placed with uh, double quotes like we're expecting. And so if I again use toString, then we should be good to go. So let's take a look. And there we are. And then finally, to make things a little bit prettier, just format that. So going to review, what we do is we use this xmap function, which we just take all the XML content data, 
we pull the person tags within a person, and it should be a list of persons coming back as people. We pull the name and the text inside of that name and stick that into a name map in the map key. And the age, we also pull in over here. And then we have to translate those to be person, um, to be persons, persons, person structs. And of course we have to translate the character lists that come back because we're using, uh, so XML uses a Erlang library underneath. And uh, there we go. And we get this coming back from our, our test. So that's how you can use Sweet XML to actually parse this data. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys how there's another way that we can use to parse XML data. And actually I will show you why uh, that way is a little bit better. Um, and that's another library called uh, Sexy. So uh, this is it for today. Uh, this is Alan from Plangora. Please subscribe if you haven't. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks, bye. Hi, please feel free to ask us any questions about Elixir, Flutter, or anything else in programming. Here's our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll answer your questions every Friday. Ya mantai, ge duk man all. Yo wenti, jida wen wo.